We are military neutral, but we're not neutral on the war in Ukraine. And I suppose for Ireland, a country that ever knows fought for its sovereignty, it's important that we stand up for international law and the rights of the Ukrainians to have theirs. There was a famous Irish patriot, Daniel O'Connell, the liberator, and he said in one, word, one line, I think, that's appropriate here, nothing that's morally wrong can be politically correct. And that's our position, that the Ukrainian people deserve their sovereignty and we stand by them and with them. And that's been the case across Europe. I think it's brought Europe together. Uh, it's been difficult. It's been difficult in the energy markets and it's been difficult uh, in the economy. But actually I think it's the strength of that collective response has surprised people, maybe including ourselves. And I think Ireland is very much part of that. We've taken a large number of Ukrainian people into our country to provide refuge and security. Uh, that's the best thing we can do because we don't provide military aid. But we stand up for international law. We stand up for the United Nations and the rights of nations. And that's what we're doing in Ukraine. And as we continue to watch what's happening there, it's uh, contributed to an energy crisis. How has that brought the challenges for your own energy supply in your country? And how has that impacted the energy transition? It has been a real challenge. A year ago, I suppose everyone was asking this question, would Europe be able to manage? Would a country like Ireland be able to manage? And what's happened since? We had a 40% increase in renewable installations. We had a 40% similar increase in the use of heat pumps to reduce our use of gas to promote energy efficiency. And through those sort of measures, there's been a 20% reduction in the use of gas, helped by a warmer, warmer than average winter. But actually, we've shown we can make the transition. So what the war is doing is accelerating the switch to a renewable efficient future. Um, and I think that is something we're going to see all over the world. That doesn't belong to any one country. It's a peace project of our time. No one will ever hold a country to ransom over renewable power shortages. You know, can, uh, do what we want to want or else we blow up the solar panel. Doesn't work as a, as a strategy. And every country has access in one form or another, be it solar or in Ireland's case, large scale wind or offshore wind particularly, or, biothera, or biomass or hydro. What's happening in the energy world, in my mind, is it's accelerating this switch to renewables and efficiency. We're doing that in Ireland. We're probably one of the leading countries of integrating renewable power. It's a tricky thing to do. Balancing variable demand and variable supply is the center of the new industrial revolution. But that's what's happening. And what I'm looking forward to in China is actually sharing and finding out what they're doing. Because actually, some people say, oh, well, you know, why should we do it? Because China isn't doing it. China's doing it at scale. Like their investment and their dominance in the markets for EV batteries, for solar, for rare earth processing means that actually we can learn a lot and gain from some of the scale that they brought to the whole renewable transition. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.